these are the dedicated ones. Uh, these are the dedicated ones. Someone has to do it. I get it. Well, we we finished the week, obviously, in three practices. And um, I think every practice you can see some improvement. Um, still a lot to do. Uh, we know that. This is why coach is coach. Right now, defensively, I've been telling the players uh, and the coaches, we, we have a bunch of players that are pieces of clay. And we're trying to mold them into players that will, will, will fit in our system. And they're, they're being required to do some things maybe they haven't done before, which is good, because they, don't, they, have, no, they have no bad habits. So I've always looked at things like that. Um, offensively, um, I think that um, you know, the system's been in place. Um, I think if you watch us, you probably see us a little bit more under center. And I think that's going to be part of who we are a little bit. I think that'll help us. Um, so, you know, as we move on, we'll continue to try to develop things and, and um, continue to get better. Is it at all an adjustment where you don't get to work with the kids for as many hours as you did? Yeah. In pro football, well, you know, the only adjustment is the meeting time. The practice time is the same. I mean, this, we're, we're practicing. You guys, are, if you come to practice, from here on out, you'll see it's, it's a pro. It's a pro schedule. Everything we do is is what we did in pro football. Um, I made. I told a joke to the to the players. Kevin and Y is now an analyst for us, and Kevin's back starts hurting after two hours, and my feet start hurting. So it's <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I told the players, I said, if you see Kevin Mawai and me getting in the cart, that means you guys are at, at two hours and you guys go ahead because we're going in. So we got to get our work done. I just think you need to be efficient. I think they're learning that. I think everyone's learning that. You know, when you, when you, when you come back to college football, uh, and I visited a lot of places. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to go down to Alabama and, and spend some days down there with Coach when I was at ESPN and some other universities as well. I visited a lot of college campuses when I was at ESPN and, and watched the practice formats and how they went about it. And um, hey, I've been in practices all my life as well. So I just think you got to be efficient. It has to be a purpose. Um, you, want it, you want practice to be mentally straining to them, physically tough, because that's how football's played. And you have to have movement, you know, whether it's between drills. If you, if you watch our coaches, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of walking now. They can't walk because you want to stress them because that's the game of football. It happens in spurts. It happens four second play. Guys go in the huddle or they don't huddle. You got to play again. And, and so we're, we're trying to create that as we coach them. And uh, when you do that, you have efficient practices. And I think we want to be efficient. We want to be fast. And we want to put the mental pressure on them to understand uh, what we're asking them to do. Yeah, that's part of them getting in condition. Um, we want them to pursue, you know. And I think once you get into condition, then you become a better team. You know, tackling is about this. You have to know where to miss, first of all. And if you miss properly, there should be nine guys running to the side of where you missed, because when you miss them, they're running away from you, basically. And there's nine guys should come clean the guy up. And so that's what we're trying to build in as a concept. Whether you're a corner, a safety, a linebacker, you have to know who's containing the guy with the ball, and the rest of the guys have to hurry to get there to, to get a lick on it. So you think it's an adjustment for the defense as a whole? The system. The, the system is completely different. I mean, it's, it, it goes from a, you know what they ran here before uh, to a 3-3-5. Three, three, um, you have to have coverage skills, big time whether you're in the back, especially in the back end uh, with, our, with our two Rangers or with the Tillman guy. And we're still, look, they, they, we don't have all our players here yet. We're going to bring some more guys in. And uh, you see guys developing. We got a couple guys out of position right now because we're looking at them at, at, the, at the Ranger position. They, we brought them in as corners. Dom Harrison was a corner. We're asking them to play the Tillman, or excuse me, the, 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 the Rover, because he's like the nickelback, basically, okay? He's basically a nickelback, but we call him you know, the Rangers, the field one in a, you know, you know, in an open field one. So they're learning, you know, and, and, and their problem is this, a new defense, new defensive coaches, uh, 
alignments, assignments are totally different. Some of these guys are coming from JC. Taron Adams, obviously, and Dom are JC corners. They weren't asked to do all this. They, they got their heads are swimming, you know. So that's part of it. But they're going to be good football players. There's a philosophical difference in college football and the NFL because of the wider hashes. Yeah, the ball. You know, it, yeah. Uh, well, it, it helps you and it hurts you. You know, uh, when the ball's on the far hash, I was telling the guys, the ball's on the far hash, uh, the, for, for the quarterback to throw the ball, if he's on the right hash, for the it's a 35-yard throw out there. So, you know, now that helps you sometimes because of how you want to schematically call your defenses. Who's the quarterback? If the quarterback's uh, arm's not that strong, then you can almost dictate some coverage to him where you won't allow him to throw to the short side. You roll up over there and force him to throw to the wall, to to the wide side, and he can't use the whole wide side of the field because his arm's not strong enough. So, you know, it has some, some strengths and it has some negatives too, so you have to kind of play it that way. What would you say if you summarized your first week, you know, we talked to you a couple of days ago, now what would you say that you've seen maybe progress-wise or not progress-wise? Uh, I, I think what I've, I've felt, and I think if you guys have gone to practice, there's an enthusiasm from the players. I can feel it. I mean, how many times on a Friday night when the players are coming back saying, Coach, can we keep going? No, he can't keep going. We, we've done our plays. That's it. They wanted to keep practicing. That's, to me, that's it. And I, I think they're eager. Uh, and we, we have them at a good place right now because it's a new staff and they're trying to prove themselves. And that always happens with change, you know. That there's a new staff coming in. And, but there's an eagerness about them. There's a there's a spirit about them right now because they're uh, they're they're they're, they're asking we're asking them to do things a little bit different even with the scheduling even the offense the way we practice is different for all these guys it's different for every coach here to be quite honest I mean the only guy that really knows the practice schedule is Kevin Mawai because he played for me in the with the Jets and that's it every other coach here this is new this, they went through three days of practice they've never done this. This is like new to them. And so I think all of that is a part of it. Do you have, do you have the identical schedule that you had with the head coach? It's a little bit. I, I've tweaked a few things to help them. But, but for the most part, yeah. I mean, the practice just flows that way. And I think the more they get used to it and the more we talk about it, they understand what the periods are and why we set the periods a certain way. It's all, it's all calculated why we do this. You know, and I've, I've done enough of them and been around enough practices where they know it's kind of funny now. And I told the players when we first started this, I said, hey, the most, the most satisfying period in the whole practice period, if there's 12 periods, is, is when you hear me say theory, that's critical. And they didn't know what that meant the first day. And I said, theory means that's the coach's, that's the coach's part. That's his, that, that, that's his period where you guys actually get to sit down and um, drink some water. And the coach gets to coach you, you know, and so I said, You'll, you'll remember that as we get going. And sure enough, I heard a couple of them tonight going, is it theory yet, coach? No, not theory yet. It's kind of ironic because um, we had some young guys in here uh, that, that visit our campus. And one of his sons is a, is a young upcoming prospect. And he played for me. And the first thing he looked at me, he said, coach, you still got theory? I mean, he played for me 10 years ago, and he said theory, and all the defensive coaches looked at him, he said, he knows, th he knows theory. You understand he what theory is? Theory? Huh? Yeah, yeah, just theory. It's a period where I just say, you know, I used to say all the time, this is where the coach sits down and he tells stories, and it's just, you know, you tell lullabies. It's, 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 it's kind of a funny, I, I made it up. You know, most people call it a water break. I call it theory. I said, it's theory. And you as a coach, you know, and I, and I just, I started doing this, and I just said, there's a theory period. And every coach looked at me, even the NFL coach, what's theory? I said, that's typically a nice way to say water break. But basically, I said, you need to tell a story. To kind of, you know, just kind of, and it's funny because when theory is called, if I walk over into that group that's sitting down, especially when I was in the NFL, they were waiting for me to tell a story about something. So it's kind of, a, it's kind of my pet peeve theory. So, so you made it up. Oh, yeah. It's just a water break, and I call it theory. It's just theory. And if players look at it, I mean, any player that's ever played, but Kevin Wilder laughing. He's going, theory, so we love theory. <laughs> when, when did you start? Oh, when I was head coach, when I became a head coach. Like immediately? Yeah, that was one of my first periods. Because everyone has them. It's just according to, you know, players can get water in and out, but 
the way you schedule practice, because of the way we practice, they're running everywhere and they're going fast, you have to have a scheduled one where everyone gets to stop for a moment. Everybody gets to collect themselves and go, okay. Like, you know, our, our period theory happens like we go one, two, three, four, five, six. We go five periods where we're going and all of a sudden theory's called. And everybody kind of stops and they go, okay, we can regroup, get some water, take a knee, coach will kind of coach you to what's been happening. And then all of a sudden we go again and there might be four more periods and all of a sudden theory. And it's on, it's on, our, it's on our practice sheet, it's theory. And it, the players know, and tonight it was funny because a couple of players went, Coach, call theory. No, not ready. Theory period not happening yet. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. They're starting to figure it out. Do you know, so do you know um, by the script where you're going to be in every skill period personally? Yeah. yeah, because if you look at our, our script, basically I have this script that tells you the period. It tells you the time of the period, what's being taught in that group. The coaches over on this side actually have notes what they're going to do in that period. So I know in certain periods, if let's say it's um, – special teams and I go okay I know what they're doing in special teams let's just say it's individual every coach has an individual period well that they have to write down what they're doing in that period so before I go to practice I can go the offensive line are doing this today the defensive line is doing that today the defensive backs are doing that today I'm going to go over in that period and watch those guys because I'm going to get involved in the coaching part of it as I said before I'm everywhere I coach everybody whether it's coaches, whether it's players, I'm going to be around guys. So I know exactly what's going to happen before it takes place. And I've got a mindset of going, I'm seeing this guy, that guy, and that guy today. Because of what I've seen on film, I can come back over there and say, look, you're doing this drill today. This is what, this is what we need. You know, so I'm, I'm just reinforcing what the coach says. I think anytime you can do that as a head coach, go to an individual drill with the position coach, that reinforces what the position coach is trying to teach. Oh, well, that's my pet peeve now. I mean, uh, you know, when you play defense, and uh, I'm all, you're going to always see me, like, hovering around those guys because there's a lot to be taught there. Um, you ain't seen it yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. There's going to be a whole lot more. And, you know, that was – that was and a lot of the coaches, you know, didn't realize that, look, we can use this bag. We walked through that drill um, Thursday came over early and I said, look, we got to incorporate this. And I said, this is how you use the big sled as the corners, you know, and safeties. We got to work our hands. There's still more to be done there. There's some other things you'll see as we keep going. The next one will be they'll actually slide from each one and hit it, hit it, hit it with the right hand, go all the way down, and then come back with the left hand. And their combination, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing once it's coordinated because it looks like a dance. Those guys are shuffling, hitting it, hitting it, and they're moving. Because that's how they got to play when they play bump. Same thing when we roll up on guys. How do we jam them? When you jam that big thing after a while, because what they got to be able to do is they got to coordinate their hands and their feet. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to do it. You got you to practice it. So there, there's a, you, you'll, you'll see a lot. The more we practice, you'll see more incorporated there and a lot of the other different drills as well.